Ahead of the March 11th governorship and state assembly elections, experts on political matters have warned that a flawed electoral system may fuel voter apathy and disinterest in political affairs. Stakeholders have also advised the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to maintain nonpartisanship and stick to the electoral laws, noting that many disgruntled election stakeholders have been accused of incompetence and malpractice in last Saturday's presidential and National Assembly elections. They contend that the current agitations against announced results revolve more around INEC's perceived incompetence and partisanship than recorded violence. Well, joining us now to discuss this trend are Anna Ob of the Situation Room and Paul James of Yaga Africa. Good to have you two on Newsday. Thank you for joining uh, us on the program for this important discussion. Uh, let me start with you. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, let me start with you, Anna. Uh, let's talk about the voter turnout. As the intro uh, read, uh, let's just throw a few figures out there. For the presidential and legislative elections, uh, they were described, uh, the turnout was described as pitifully low by the Financial Times. Only a third of the 87 million people who actually had PVCs came out to vote and not to talk about the months of insecurity that led up to the elections. Um, there's also a lot of talk of voter suppression. We saw a lot of the videos of ballot box being snatched, uh, voters being attacked and harassed and intimidated. So are our security services, uh, are they not aware? Are they under equipped? Are they overstressed during this particular election period? or in order for them to do the job of securing all the posts that uh, you know, the, the Inspector General of Police told us would, be, would get uh, manned during the selections, or is it incompetence and uh, are they compromised? Which is which? Um, I think if we want to look at uh, the issue of the security or looking or look at the flawed nature of the election, we shouldn't just go to the security and say, security, you are the one that has made it so. Uh, when you look at the apathy as well, when we are going into this election, INEC assured us, they published the number of polling units that we have, the ones that were expected, the ones that were not going to be open, about 240 was not going to be open because they were not populated. But we went into the election with 176,606 polling units. <coughs> As at this moment, we do not have the audit of how many polling units the election was conducted. Because we believe that that will give us a better idea because the log logistics was a sham. Um, from as, uh, once uh, the logistics was not moved by Thursday, we knew we were heading for you know, a cascading effect. Because n under normal conditions, by Thursday, you ought to have moved all the things that you needed to move from the central bank. That's the sensitive materials. And at this time, they were looking for money. They were looking for also the sensitive materials. On Friday, as at, as at about 12 noon, we still had only one third of the states that have received their things at the central bank. And when we talked to them, even down to evening, we were seeing some of the states still receive, you know, struggling. At the end of the day, they got the things from the central bank, but it was too late to go to the RATEX. And so when we are looking at the issue of security, I, incidentally, I will, I will say we commend this, the security agencies for the work that they did to a certain level. It is the areas where ballot boxes were snatched, or is this snatch or smashed, because when you snatch it now, it's almost of no use to you. Um, we also saw security agencies, and we reported that, and the police said they were trying to put the um, incidences together. They say about 12 incidences. We were thinking that the security would be overpowered. The agencies had synergy, you know, uh, and so we cannot put the blame on security. You know, they have their blames, but it cannot be as large as that of INEC. INEC made a promise you know, to conduct this election in a free, fair, and credible manner. And uh, one of the core things 
that we had was the IREP portal that it was going to be offloaded as soon as. So when you look at logistics, first from the delivery or getting the ad hoc you know, staff getting to the pooling units, we had it was a whole shampoo. Some people as at close of pools, ad hoc materials had, uh, you know, ad hoc staff had not reached many of the pooling units. And so when you look at that, you are not talking about the security people now. We, when we're going in, we had a threshold. We had a pre-election assessment before we went into the election, and we raised the hotspots. For example, we say the southeast was going to be a trouble spot because of the IPOP. But do you know that many people came out en masse to come and vote? There was no trouble in those areas. And then you go to even where you have the conflict in the, in the northeast. Many people came out to vote, but did ad hoc staff, did logistics get to them? So many places that there was no conduct of election. I set an example like Jigwao well, during the resort collation, they say about 95 pulling units, which was more than 508,000 persons. The election was knocked off because of failure or beavers or something, one thing or the other. So I think INEC needs to come clear to tell us how many, because as are the pulling units that you are going to conduct election, the police were paid allowances to be in all of those pulling units. So the number of the pulling units that you did not deploy, what happened to them? And we are, going to, we are holding INEC accountable because this election is a very, very serious election. 403 billion were given for this election. Did they give it to them? They are the ones that should be held accountable and that should talk about it, not me. But INEC up till this moment, you know, locked themselves down in terms of communication. They have not talked to Nigerians what happened. You made a promise, the INEC chairman made a promise to Nigerians. And you know, we are at a tech age. The young people are monitoring. It's not only INEC that collate uh, uh, you know, numbers. Everybody is interested to see because it's a lesson in democracy when you are deepening democracy. And so we cannot hold uh, well, uh, you know, the, the security responsible. But again, coming to security, what we had advocated a long time ago because of abuse of human rights is that no security person holds um, you know, arms at the pulling unit, but at the perimeter, you know, at the perimeter, there should be. But did the police have uh, equipment in terms of uh, walkie-talkie to raise alarm when they see you know, people with arms coming into the station, rather they run for their, their lives? I think that's the aspect that they need to check. They need to be able to look at that. But I can tell that uh, the logistics was a major, major issue from the beginning. And to cap it up, elections that came in, many people were disenfranchised. They didn't get to the level, you know, so many people queued till night and they never saw INEC officials. We need to hold them accountable for that. Now, Paul, let me come to you. Despite huge mobilization for voter registration and PVC collection, there was low voter turnout during the presidential election. In fact, some data collation centers have declared it as the lowest since Nigeria's independence. What would you say was responsible for this? That's the first part of my question. There's also fears that there would be voter apathy during the election this Saturday. How do we prevent that? How do we encourage more people to come out and vote, considering how the presidential election turned out? Thank you very much. I think there will be a lot of questions to ask and even to provide immediate answers to. First, on the part of the election commission, it gave us a figure before the 2019 election, if you remember, that it had registered 84 million. We went into that election, out of the election, we realized a discrepancy of about 1.6 million. This election, INEX said it registered 93 million and had also issued out 87 million PVCs. We saw the turnout on election day. This was also the official figure that had INEC uh, presented, 26%. But that is not to say people didn't make attempts in this election. I thought there were attempts to also suppress votes in this election. We have to say it as it is. If you go first on election day about even uh, the commencement of polls, by 7.30, based on the data that we gathered at Yaga Africa, only 27% of location had INEC officials. By 9.30 in the morning, only 44% of locations had commenced accreditation and voting. Now, we saw a trend, as we have, like, just like we have seen in 2015 and even in 2019, that in the south-south and the south, uh, southeast geopolitical zone, commencement was delayed. For instance, in the southeast, only 11% of locations had INEC officials by 9.30 in the morning. Now, um, even after polls had commenced, 
uh, that was attempted by INF to give people the chance to be able to participate in this process. But even in the southeast, we had reports, for instance, in Anambra State of location that started as late as 4 p.m. Again, if you remember, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the deployment of beavers was to every polling that we observed. In 88% of locations, the beavers functioned throughout the day. In about 8%, it malfunctioned and was replaced. In 2%, uh, in it malfunctioned and was not replaced, meaning or implying that voting in that location was suspended to continue the next day. Now, INEC had told Nigeria that it was going to conduct elections in these locations. From our sample, we deployed to a sample of 1,507 that has spread across all the 774 local governments. From our sample, 20 polling units, INEC did not conduct election. And it told, INEC told Nigerians to return the next day for the, uh, for the election. We returned on February the 26th. 13 of the 20 polling units did not see INEC officials. The other seven polling units, INEC did show up, but they showed up late. Now, this is All just right. one point. I Paul, remember, allow me we, to interrupt you. Uh, apologies. Uh, Paul, allow me to interrupt you. Uh, we will come back to you after. Welcome back to Newsday. Our guests are still with us in, in our Buja studio, NLB of the Situation Room, and Paul James of Yaga Africa. Now, Paul, before we took that, um, before we took a look at the markets, you were talking about how to prevent voter apathy this Saturday. I'd like you to finish, please. Yeah, so I was saying on the part of the commission, what we have seen also, what we saw was also about how they apply some of the guidelines or the rules of the election. For instance, even in the usage of the beavers, there were complaints about location where ordinarily you expect INEC to deploy more than two beavers because of the size of the voters. Uh, INEC did not deploy enough beavers. And uh, even in some locations, the way and manner the INEC officials uh, use the beavers was questionable. They spent, uh, they spent unnecessary uh, time to process just a single voter. Sometimes you even question whether or not the officials were adequately trained on how they are going to use the beavers. I was talking also about the concerns around voter party. What we saw even before we went into the election, if you recall during the PVC collection process, there were complaints about uh, INEC officials and their attitude around it. Sometimes you go to this location, you don't find INEC officials. Sometimes they are there, they arrive very late. Other times they are there also, the attitude, especially the cards will just be there, follow. They are not sorted according to how it will be easier for INEC officials to be able to pick up these cards and give to voters. So voter, voters uh, arrive this location, they are discouraged because of this sort of attitude. But then as, uh, for the election proper, as we go into the election, for instance, especially as we are planning towards the March, March 11th election, we hope lessons have been learned. I heard INEC is already talking about another retraining. I hope they will take this training serious and we will not end up with the case as we saw in the FCT election last time that at the end, after all of this, that INEC replaced some of its ad hoc staff on the morning of the election. We hope it is the staff that are trained that will be deployed and that this staff will also have access to every aspect of this process, especially the equipment that will be deployed. For instance, on election day last time, we saw staff calling their superior officers uh, when they were not able to either use the beavers or were not able to, uh, to, to use certain aspects of the machine, especially in the processing and uploading of uh, the polling unit level results. So we hope INEC have learned lessons from that and we'll see improvement on Saturday. Well, thank you for that, uh, Paul. And then let me come back to you and talk about this, uh, of course, this next Saturday's elections. We know that the there was an increase in the amount of individuals that registered for their PVCs uh, this, uh, for this electoral season. Uh, some are saying that it's an offshoot of the NSARS protests. A lot of the youth who finally found their political voice and want to exercise their civic duty for the first time. And for those individuals, having not seen a full electoral process play out the way this one has, and I mean, uh, what I mean by play out is the multiple issues of BVAS and IREV and all these other acronyms that seem to have uh, underperformed on the actual day, and then seeing their favorite candidates uh, at uh, uh, going to court to battle it out for what they uh, say is their own uh, share of the presidential ticket. 
all of these things seem a little less encouraging. Do you have hopes that um, more people or even at least half of the amount of people that turned up for the presidential elections will turn out for the governorship elections? And what kind of impact could this have on the numbers that we get? I, I think uh, going into the election, we had a lot of hope, but we we're seeing the kind of hardship that Nigerians were going through, especially because of the issue of cash. You know, that held everybody down. You are doing transfers, even those who, are, who have the uh, technology to, have, to do transfers and all of that, you do transfer, maybe after three days it is returned to you or you cannot get money, you know, a lot of access issues and hardship especially knowing that the Nigerian economy is controlled by the informal sector. That was let off hard. So when we're going into the election, we thought, you know, uh, will they, we were feeling that maybe not many people will turn out. But the opposite was the case. A lot of people turned out and they were not able to vote. How do you now mobilize them to go back? In, we, are appealing for, we have been appealing for calm. We have been talking. And uh, the issue of transparency and accountability let the, the, the young people be started trusting again the system because the coming of the beavers, which was used in all the off-cycle election, starting from Anambra, you have, you have Edo, you have Anambra, you have um, AKT and uh, Oshun. The one in, uh, in uh, FCT was a shambo, we thought, but when we moved to uh, AKT, it worked. And so it showed that people's voices will count. And so we were heavy on the issue of vote buying you know, because we believe that that vote buying is demeaning of you know, Nigerians, you know. Uh, and so we, we had called on the police to arrest those who are uh, conducting vote buying, you know, uh, from different places, vote buying or vote selling. You know, and so the, the ICPC, for example, rose, EFCC especially, rose in their numbers to everywhere. They brought out the numbers for every state. You, this is where you need. So we could see that vote buying on the street come down you know, to about 7% of, the, of the, the places that we observed. And so that wasn't the major again. So security wasn't the major. Now you are coming to mobilize, mobilizing people. The young people believe in technology. And so this election was supposed to be one of the best elections ever conducted in Nigeria. But what we had, again, is the IREP, the portal failed. And INEC is not able to explain it to, to anybody. We want to let them know that a lot of money was invested a lot of money was invested in technology to make this election more tech savvy and also making people bringing out transparency and accountability. We didn't see that. And INEC is not explaining. And so we are working, we are going to another election. We are still appealing to Nigerians to go in for the election, to go and cast you know, their votes. But people are not being held accountable. We are happy to see, you know, in this election, we had a third force. We are used to two-party system. And then we had a third force where young people also entrusted themselves. And now you are not even showing them clearly that these older one, you know, uh, parties want clearly. You are putting, because of your not communicating, you are putting a shade around all of it. And that's why from the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room, we say the, the election lacked credibility. Because we, we are not bothered about who wins. After all, it's all of them are... Nigerians that are contesting, but the process is as good as the result that you get. And so the process is very disappointing. INEC that is the umpire that has the authority to conduct this election is not talking to Nigerians about what they do. And I think they should come out. We are appealing to more Niger for Nigerians not to give up. This is an experience of a lifetime. And we are going to experience it together. Many of us, we are here. We are not leaving this country for anybody. So whoever is trying to twat or to taunt us, will have to be responsible to answer for it. But we are appealing for calm, and we are appealing for people not to give up, to go and cast their vote. It will be an experience together. But we, from the civil society, we are holding INEC accountable for what they have done. We are holding the security you know, uh, sector also accountable for where we saw even security men guarding politicians, and they are going to a pulling unit to knock down issues. They have to be able to look at that. Because so many um, you know, security men are guarding politicians and they are paid by my taxpayer and your taxpayer you pay money. What we suffer to pay is being experienced in this. And so transparency and accountability is an issue. The issue of trust deficit 
is deepened as we go into the governorship election. But let them not have the best way. Others have said they are going to court. So let's calm down and make sure that we go out a mass and again cast our votes. But we are also watching INEC to be accountable. This is the first election that we are hearing that INEC did not even get to pulling units. That is very shocking. They have taken us more than 50 years back. Well, Paul, INEC has promised that glitches experienced with the beavers and uploading of results during the presidential election will be rectified before this Saturday's election. The INEC chair also says um, resident electoral commissioners will be blamed for any failures experienced during the governorship election. Now, is this enough to reassure voters, or does INEC need to do more to boost voters' confidence? I think what voters will first want to say is sanction from what had happened last Saturday. Nobody has been named, nobody has been shamed, nobody has been apprehended, nobody has been sanctioned as to this moment as we speak. Uh, this is an election that is premised or predicated on technology and that also draws its strength now from Section 47 of the New Electoral Act. Everything was up on the table in this election and INEC failed. Now, um, as of this morning, even from the upload of the result that was giving people hope, giving people assurance that INEC could do something different this time, we were still at 92% as of this morning. This is an election that was conducted one week ago. Now, um, this election also, INEC made a commitment before the election that, I mean, even based on the electoral act now, the conclusion of the election will be determined by the number of PVCs collected. INEC made a commitment that it was going to upload the number of accredited voters at the end of voting, which is supposed to now be on this online portal that Nigerians will see, which also implied that the number of valid vote, invalid vote, and all of that will be drawn from this number of accredited at the end, which is supposed to inspire confidence, which is uh, supposed to be that assurance for especially the young voters. That was not done. That was not possible. Going into this election, it is beyond just the assurance. Now we're already hearing or we are concerned, especially because of the ongoing legal battle. INEC is already applying whether it could be able to assess this beaver so that because before the commencement of polls, the beaver is supposed to be returned to an initial state. It is supposed to be set as zero. Now we are barely like three or four days to the election. We don't know how or when this will be resolved. And we don't know how INEC intend to go about, about this. This is a fundamental question that we need to ask. But on the part of the young people, like I said, the assurance or the confidence they need from the commission is to see how INEC can remedy whatever was the challenge from last time. It is just beyond uh, talking about we want to hold people accountable. Who are these people? What did they do? What was the glitch? It's also just beyond telling us there was a glitch. What was the glitch and what has been done to prevent it from reoccurring for the second time? I know a lot of people are waiting for that information, Paul, but it, it seems that it might not come uh, in time. Uh, I'm going to pose a similar question to you, Ene, about uh, whether or not you think that uh, what the INEC chairman came to say is a little bit of a mea culpa. If it's enough to get individuals to come out to vote uh, on Saturday, if that's enough for them. And also, the, with the influence of Naira in the uh, money in this uh, elections, we, we, can't, uh, we, we can't say that it wasn't used at all. Clearly, its effects have been seen. We know that the uh, Supreme Court recently allowed the old 500, 1,000, and 200 Naira notes to be used uh, legally. Is that going to have any type of effect on uh, these particular elections, as we know before there were issues in the last elections? When you are talking of the money that they have allowed, according to some of the banks, they say they have not heard from central bank. So money is not yet in circulation. For all the information that we have gotten, the central bank, you know, the, the Supreme Court has made its judgment, but uh, nobody. And you, when you want to look at those who were struggling for that money, you know, struggling for this, it is the state governors. You know, so you feel, what is it that, they, how come the common man is not involved in the negotiation? It is because many of the common people, they have taken all they have to the bank. All they want is the money, give me back my money or give me some of my money. Let me go and do what I want to do. And you are not getting the money. But you find a lot of people who have looted, you know, the treasury 
of so many states across the country. Many of the workers are not paid. You know, they are still just walking around. We have states that have not paid up to 13 months of uh, salary. If you don't pay for two months, many of us, we know where we will be if we have not received salary for two months or three months or four months. We know how many people are dying because they are not collecting any money. And so it's the same people who have stored money that are seeking for, um, you know, uh, freedom so that they can utilize that money during a uh, governorship or whatever election. But at least we still have the collaboration of the agencies. Some of the agencies are willing to work, and they are doing it. We are seeing them. We have the numbers for EFCC. Some of them who are governors today, I'm sure that the EFCC and ICPC, they are waiting for them to finish, and they will get them. That's why a lot, a lot of them are going for senatorial positions, and they are losing the, the, the positions. Many of, them, many of the governors have gone. Most of the time, it's like the parliament is their retirement home so that they can go and hold on there as if they are hiding in a place. There is no hiding place in this life, wherever you are. And so the money may play a part, but at least we have the assurance of the, of the different agencies, DSS, you know, ICPC, EFCC, and, and so on and so forth, that are going to be watching. And so we'll continue to watch. We'll watch them as they perform. But for logistics, the issues of INEC, up till this moment as I'm talking, the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room worked very closely, and Action Aid Nigeria, we worked very closely with the electoral body. And we're hoping for the best election, even for logistics, but it never happened. The thing is that the burden that the electoral body is carrying is more than it. They are not making any statement. They are not telling us whether it's the money that CBN didn't give them was what delayed uh, um, their late arrival of materials. They are holding on to that. And so you don't have to hold anybody. You take your rule, and they are not communicating. So what is the danger that you are not communicating? You can't tell Nigerians what has happened. You say glitches, just like Paul said. You are having glitches. Saying you have glitches is not enough for Nigerians. It's not enough for me. It's not enough for my colleagues. What, what really happened? You made a promise to Nigerians. If you fail a promise, our leaders should learn to say, sorry, this happened. Or whatever happened, you need to tell Nigerians because our money is involved. And blood has been involved because some people died. You and know, NLB. And you cannot be tendering apology. NLB of Situation Room and Paul James of Yaga Africa, thank you so much for joining us for this very important discussion. Thank you.